Hello, you absolutely amazing person, you. My name is Sandy Boucher. Mishko Pognon Kwein Adishnakas Mung Nodem. I'm Red Thunderbolt Woman of the Loon Clan, a proud member of Seine River First Nation in Treaty 3 territory in Northern Ontario, and I'm here once again with my Lightning Bolt blog post review. For those of you not familiar with my lifeline tattoo or my logo for my company, Mishko Pokanon Kwe, Red Thunderbolt Woman, I am said to represent that split second in time when the thunder sounds exactly as the lightning strikes. And if you live in an area that experiences thunderstorms, you know that when those two things happen together, that means the storm is directly overhead. Well, I've never been known for being subtle, so I always... If you read my blog posts, you know there's often that thought, that wake-up call, that, that aha moment. And I call those my lightning bolts. So, that's why this blog post review is my lightning bolt review. Let's look at the week of January 23rd to 27th. There were some heavy-hitting comments in there or heavy hitting posts and I would love to hear what you think but you know what before I have to say anything else uh, we're coming to the end of January the posts have been pretty heavy pretty mm, let's get this right and I am loving the feedback I was nervous my internalized oppressions as indigenous people don't get that blunt it still makes me nervous at times that's my unpacking to do. But every day I hear from people who email me back, the people on my email list, saying like, Sandy, oh my God, I needed to hear this. I never thought of it that way. I so appreciate this. And this is me saying, I appreciate you because you are my fuel. Indigenous or non, we all can help each other grow and learn and unpack the limiting beliefs that we've all carried way too long. So let's look at the blog post. On January 23rd, well, I shared a poem called On the Margins, and I just, I would love to hear what you thought of it. I do that every now and then. All of my books are, you know, sprinkled with a poem here and there. I would love to hear what you thought. It was just a reminder, look for us in your boardroom, in the coffee shop, in the grocery store. If you're not seeing indigenous people there, know there's a reason. And it is not that we're not interested in being there. It may be that we're not interested in being there right now because it's not yet a safe space for us. So I hope you appreciated that. On January 24th, um, I reflected back and commented on the fact that like, I work a lot. I'll, I'll give you that. I love my work. I'm sitting here listening to music, enjoying myself. and But I hear all the time, how in the world do you do that? How did you put out four books? How do you do a blog post every single day? Like, ah, the amount of content. How do you do that? I actually found the answer in one of my oldest videos. I shared it in the email that went out that, when was that? January 24th. So if you want to look at it, uh, find that email. If you can't find it, email me. I'll send you the link to the video. It's on my YouTube channel. And it was just, I don't know how much I can do yet. That as a Quay, as an Anishinaabe Quay, as an indigenous woman, I have grown up in a world that you can't do that and you can't do that and you'll never be able to do that. And over and over and over, I've proven that stereotype wrong and that one wrong and that one wrong. And that is thrilling for me. It is not about how much money I can make. It's more about, holy crap, I made that much money. They said I could never do that. I reached that many people. I reached that many people on social media. So I haven't hit the wall yet. And that is so exciting to me. I want to keep going and keep going and see what else I can do. See how many more people I can help. So I really hope you enjoyed that post. On January 25th, well, a 60-minute reconciliation trial run. 
it's a suggestion from me on how reconciliation is going to be a journey a lot longer than 60 minutes but if you try this for 60 minutes maybe you'll be on the right path check it out i'd love to know what you think on january 26th it was one of my revelations which happens all the time as i go through my life and and women of whatever cultural background watching this you're part of a marginalized group and I, I don't think there's any woman out there that would be surprised by that fact we know that but what i realized is non-indigenous men white men white canadian men I'm still meeting way too many in the C-suite, the CEOs and CFOs and CAOs that have no interest in listening to women, their own women. And that got me thinking, holy molies, if you're not going to even listen to the women of your cultural background, what's the odds you're going to listen to me? That's something you can look at in your office space, in your community. How are the women being treated? Fix that because we need you to hear us. I don't want you to have more respect for indigenous women, although we definitely deserve respect. All women deserve respect. Pass that message on to whoever needs to hear it. And last but not least, oh, we're still living in the world of pretendians non-indigenous people non-indigenous people pretending to be indigenous that's why they're called pretendians they either claim an indigenous ancestry and you know know the teachings and the culture and you look and their ancestry is like six generations ago which means they're no longer carrying the teachings or it's non-existent at all in the case of many of the news paper articles and again i have to stress this is not if you're a 60 scoop survivor if you're a child that was taken and put in into foster care you're indigenous and were denied your culture that does not make you a pretendian they're never the ones out there preaching and that's the problem these pretendians always set themselves up as teachers as experts what so it's so dangerous because mainstream institutions hire these people. Of course they do because they know how to operate in mainstream institutions because they're mainstream. It can be challenging to work with indigenous people, even indigenous consultants, because it is a cultural difference. But if you can't do that with the consultant you've hired to help you navigate this journey, are you really interested in navigating the journey? If you're looking for the easy route, you're not even talking about reconciliation. You're talking about convenience. So the need for balance talked about, well, how I make sure I'm not a pretendian. I can't be. My heritage is very easy. I have my status card. I could put it here, but I'm not going to show you my ID. Don't do that online these days. But I mean, it's there. It's, I'm a member of St. River First Nation. Me, immediate, this generation. So, But even I have to maintain my balance. That's what that post is all about. You'll see what I mean. You got to go read it. So I hope you found, I'd be interested to hear which one did you really need to hear. I hope you needed to hear them all. I hope they all helped you. But if there was one that really stood out for you, I would love to hear that. And I hope you're enjoying these video reviews. I hope you've checked out my new podcast. I've just been doing very 10 minute entries so far. I'm going to expand on that, give you a chance to do like a mini training with me on the podcast, The Path. Hmm. Check it out on Spotify like the video, share this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, all of these ways, follow my blog post, get on my email list. I'm literally here to help you. And all of the things I just listed are free. So if you're still confused about reconciliation, in my mind, zero excuse. Here's all these free resources. Join me on the journey. I would love to walk with you. Until next week, I love you. 
Take care. Bye-bye. Don't forget, if you have any questions, Sandy at SandyBoucher.com. Love you. Bye-bye.